a thread by Brian Cates, and this is an enormously important Spygate thread. Try to get all the way through it. It's going to be complex. I'm going to explain anything that I think might be a little bit unclear to newbies. Starting with Brian, imagine that. General Michael Flynn knew more about the number of FBI special agents and resources than FBI special agent Joseph Pienka III did. When Flynn asked how many special agents there are, Pienka guessed 10,000. Flynn then told him it's actually 17,000. Now this is from a briefing very, very early in the Trump presidency, possibly during the transition. And uh, I'm going to read it. And it's going to be notes taken by Special Agent Joseph Pientka, a guy who obviously worked on the Spygate attack on the presidency, the Russia disinformation hoax. He was, in, he was right in the center of all that. He worked with Strzok. He worked with Page. He worked with all those people. This is Joseph Pienka taking notes during a quote-unquote defensive briefing with the incoming National Security Advisor, General Michael Flynn. When the notes refer to the writer, that's referring to himself, to Joseph Pienka. He's the one taking these notes. So I'm going to read this to you now. Flynn then asked the writer, how many special agents are in the FBI? Writer told Flynn that he thought over 10,000. Flynn stated, you have 17,000. Flynn then asked the writer, how many HVE cases, HVE stands for homegrown violent extremists, does the FBI have? Writer stated, the FBI has approximately redacted a statistic backed up by John Mulligan, Deputy Chief of the National Counterterrorism Center. Okay, so the writer is covering his ass on that guess. Flynn then spoke to Trump and said, see, they don't have enough resources to work with the, to work the HVE threat and the IOs. Okay, so IO stands for intelligence officers, foreign spies operating in the US. Flynn then asked Ryder, is it worse now than during the Cold War? Ryder, Pianka, responded, that the number of identified known and suspected intelligence officers from hostile foreign intelligence services posted in the U.S. are equal to or greater than during the Cold War. So, Flynn was making the point to Trump that the FBI lacks resources to track and investigate all the homegrown violent extremists inside the U.S., as well as undercover intelligence officers from China and other countries operating here. Since this was supposedly a briefing about Russian intelligence officers operating inside the US, China only gets a brief mention as FBI Special Agent Joseph Pienka III contrasts how Russian intelligence officers operate and collect intelligence versus how the Chinese intelligence officers do it. Remember, as you read this section of the briefing, Pienka is observing Flynn here because he's under it because Flynn is under investigation for being a Russian agent. All right. Very, very important. You won't understand any of this if this isn't clear. This is a quote unquote defensive briefing from FBI Special Agent Joseph Pienka III, but it is under false pretenses. What Joseph Pienka is really trying to do is find something to try to tie Flynn to Russian intelligence. It's all about getting Flynn. Okay. Then Pienka will show up in the White House five and a half months later. Okay, this is a defensive briefing from before Trump has even won. Okay, so what they're doing is they're sending in, so what they do with these presidential candidates is whether they win or not, the major party candidates get defensive briefings from intelligence services and the FBI, okay? In anticipation of one of the two sides winning. So this is five and a half months before Trump even go, comes into office, okay? Because the, the, you know, they sent special agents on January 24th, only four days after Trump assumed office. Okay. Here is what Joseph said to, and this is the defensive briefing of Michael Flynn. Here's what Joseph Pienka said to Michael Flynn and Trump. You should be mindful of your use of landline telephones, cellular telephones, email and computer networks. As you are aware, Discussions regarding classified information should only be held in a facility certified for classified discussions. Those are called SCIFs. Therefore, a foreign intelligence service would not necessarily target you technically to gain access to the classified information you were briefed on, but you will be targeted for sensitive and personal information about you. At this time, 
Flynn interjected, I did SIGINT. Okay, SIGINT means signals intelligence. So spying on people's emails, on their phone calls, on their signals. Ryder responded that he could then appreciate what our country can do technically to exploit a tier one target, and we must extrapolate a foreign intelligence service could do the same to us. Trump then stated, yes, I understand. It's a dark time. Nothing is safe on computers anymore. We used to lock things in a safe in a room. Now anyone can get in. My son is 10 years old. This is before Barron even turned 11. He has a computer and we put a code word on it. Within 10 minutes, he broke the code word and we needed to put another one on the computer. Kids are genius. Well, maybe Barron's genius. Ryder followed up by stating, in addition, you should not only consider how you communicate out where you communicate sensitive information, foreign intelligence services will develop a pattern on where you hold private meetings or discussions. They will attempt to determine if the location is a meeting room, kitchen, bedroom, vehicle, etc. Once a pattern is established, they will attempt to exploit that location technically. Okay, so that's information. That's a transcript from a conversation that Joseph Pienka was taking notes about from a defensive briefing well before Trump won the election. What you have to, okay, we're back to Brian now. What you have to keep in mind is that Pienka and everybody else at the FBI involved in this knew there was no Russian agent there. He knew this was about damaging the Trump campaign. Russia, Russia, Russia was just the excuse being used to go on a fishing expedition. The point I am making here is that anybody, who thinks General Flynn didn't know the two friendly FBI agents dropping in to have a friendly chat with him were from the counterintelligence division specializing in conducting counterintelligence investigations is 100% wrong. Flynn knew the timeline, even if everybody else has forgotten it. The leak to the Washington Post the leak of the conversation on the phone he had with Kislyak when he was in the Dominican Republic. Two weeks of building media stories, building media stories about his being a Russian agent, doing a secret deal over the phone. All these things are already in the press. He knows about these things. But what are we told? One phone call from Andrew McCabe put Flynn at ease? I'm telling you. I don't care if a cover story was put in place by Flynn himself. He knew by January 24th, 2017, that he was a target of federal leakers and federal investigators. He knew. Don't tell me he didn't know. He knew. He may never admit this, of course. There are things in play here that can never be publicly discussed. But that doesn't change the timeline and my completely reasonable observation that a person of average intelligence would have grasped what Strzok and Pienka were up to. And from my observation of Flynn over the years from a great distance, <clears throat> I can tell he possesses an intelligence that is far above average. So he wants the cover story, the dirty cops led by Comey and McCabe fooled him completely. That's okay. I can't change that. He needs that cover story out there that McCabe set him up beautifully for a perjury trap with a phone call in order to trap all these dirty cops. He can't admit he set them all up. It is what it is. It doesn't change anything that's going to happen. In trying to destroy Trump and Flynn, all these dirty cops and government officials exposed themselves. If a cover story has to be maintained in order to send Comey and McCabe and Strzok and Kevin Kleinsmith and all the others to prison, so be it. For around three and a half years now, I've been thinking FBI Special Agent Joseph Pienka III was one of the first, if not the first, to realize Horowitz and whoever investigated Spygate once Russia un Russiagate unraveled was going to find it all and flipped and got a deal. It's the only explanation <clears throat> for why the DOJ insisted on completely ghosting him all this time. Strzok was dragged out 
for a contentious congressional hearing in front of the entire country. He and McCabe and Lisa Page became nationally known faces. Pienka? A cipher. While Comey and McCabe and Strzok and Page and so many other Spygate plotters smirked for the cameras and denied, 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 thinking they were safe. This would all blow over soon. Pienka seems to have been the only one to realize where this was actually going to go. And today, Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe declassified and publicly released documents from a briefing Pientka did for candidate Donald Trump, General Flynn, and Chris Christie in August of 2016. And the documents reveal that the briefing wasn't real. Pientka, along with Strzok and FBI top lawyer Kevin Kleinsmith, set up this fake briefing as part of the FBI's crossfire hurricane investigation into both the Trump campaign and General Michael Flynn. The story, until today, has been that this was a real counter-intel briefing of the Trump campaign on Russian interference in the coming 2016 election. Pienka there just to observe Flynn during the briefing. Never, not even a rumor, had surfaced before today that Pienka was the briefer himself and that the briefing was a fake only set up as part of the Crossfire Hurricane team's investigation of the Trump campaign. Amazing operational security here, eh? Do you realize how amazing it is that in D.C., a town full of leakers, there wasn't even a hint before today that Joe Pienka was the one giving the briefing to the Trump campaign? The D.C. leak culture defeated again. Wow. Think about what you learned today. No, really. Sit down. Put your thinking cap on. Put your feet up. Go into full-blown reflection mode. Look carefully. There will be a quiz. First, this document reveals that supposed fake defensive briefing, that that supposed fake defensive briefing of the Trump campaign in August of 2016 was really an investigative tool set up by the FBI's Crossfire Hurricane team to entrap Trump and his associates. Strzok, Kleinsmith, and Pienka never mentioned Page or Papadopoulos. Second, the document reveals who the fake briefing was given to. It was given to these three people. Think carefully what the implications of that are. Donald Trump, Michael Flynn, Chris Christie. I mean, it's right there. Look, these three people knew about this briefing and who it was that gave them the briefing for going on four years now, right? You know I'm right. You could tell me I'm right because I am, in fact, right. Continuing this thread in the morning, hitting the pause button, but overnight, and by the way, I'm about to go straight to the next part, but overnight, ponder the implications of, one, President Donald J. Trump, Two, Lieutenant General Michael T. Flynn. Three, Chris Christie. Knowing for four years now who gave them this briefing. And we're going to fast forward straight to part two. Okay. Thanks to the great techno fog who jogged my memory, time to make a correction. It was known prior to yesterday that FBI Special Agent Joseph Pienka III briefed both the Trump Clinton campaigns about the Russian interference. It was in the IG report last December. Here are the two things I want you to focus on. One, up until now, in every document before yesterday, Pienka's name was scrupulously redacted. He was always either referred to as SSA1, something special agent, I don't know what the first S is for, or redacted. You know, his name is just blacked out. 
even though we all knew who it was, they insisted on redacting his name until yesterday. They were no longer going to redact Pientka's name in these officially declassified documents. That's a huge tell. Now, on to the second thing I want you to focus on. Two, President Trump, General Flynn, and Chris Christie have known for four years now who FBI Special Agent Joseph Pientka III is, how central and key he is to launching and participating in the Russiagate hoax, and it never leaked. Strzok gets all the attention. Pienka is just some ghost faded into the background. That's on purpose. Even when the IG report hit last December, there was no big wave over it. SSA1 giving a briefing to the Trump team. That changed yesterday in a big way. If they're not redacting his name and doing a classified document release revealing the briefing he gave was fake and part of a sting being run on the Trump campaign as part of the FBI's crossfire hurricane investigation, they're ready to take Pientka public. Pientka was allowed to be a ghost to this point. Now, Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe just materialized him front and center and revealed the actual nature of that fake defensive briefing. And just think, there's still seven more days to go in July. Who knows what'll drop over the next week?